They're so tiny. Yeah. Marissa's head's in the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. I guess that's what everybody's been doing to that, so that's okay. Anyway, all right. Hey, everybody here. We are Linear Radio. Uh, we do a podcast called The Deep Cast. Uh, sorry we're a little bit late, but it seems that all of our channels were muted. We had no idea how to how to be audio, audible to Sorry. anybody. <laughs> um, usually, we, we actually just worked out a format for our podcast in about two and a half hours, but since this is not going to be that long at all, we're going to have to you know, make it a little bit smaller, not go on as long as we usually would. Um, my name is Tom, this is Marissa, the opera, and Rodrigo, uh, and we're just going at it. Anyway, uh, we usually start with movies. Did we watch any movies since the last time we did a podcast or we just all not watch movies? I feel like no, I watched a few movies. Oh, what did you watch? What I watch? <laughs> what did you watch? What did I, watch? <laughs> what did you watch? I watched Mr. Nobody. Uh, oh, that movie's awesome. What is it? Mr. Mr. Nobody? Nobody? Oh, is it? Is it, is it, is it hard to follow? Is it depressing? It looks like it's depressing. It's depressing. Is and it's heartwarming at the same time. Um, kind of like the way that... Uh, Okay, what's not? Like, kind of like what Benjamin Button was? Like, like what is? Like, Benjamin Button or Forrest Gump, like, depressing and hard at the same time. Yeah. But it's definitely much prettier. Um, it's filmed, it's very erratic. It's very sad. And, uh, the plot kind of jumps around everywhere. Oh, it's, it's hard to explain. It's like, the idea is that this guy, without spoiling too much of the plot, like, it's like, guy going through all the different choices that he could have made in his life that would lead to where he is in the future. He, he basically like keeps telling stories that make sense, right? Like I can't tell, I don't remember, I heard it's not for this, but it's like he exists in multiple, like, basically he's like lead, led a bunch of lives, but they're like, but which one did you actually lead? And they're, yes. all, they're all like kind of the truth, but like they can't be the truth. Yeah, they're all, they're all the truth depending on which choice he made at certain junction, junctions in his life. So every story branches off from a different choice. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, I didn't see Finding Dory. You, did, you didn't see what? You Finding did. Dory. You did. No, I, didn't. I want to see it. Uh, yeah. I want to see it. Didn't it just come out today? No, it came out like a week ago. Did it really? Day. No, like today, I think. Oh. I, don't know. I thought it came out today. Yeah, I don't know how movies came out because I don't. Go searching out. Yeah, the opposite the only person who ever watched movies ever. Oh, right. For some reason. We just see him play video games. Yeah, the opposite is a lot of time at home. Short for movies. I try, but then I just like get sidetracked with art and video games. Yeah, we don't. We, we were going to talk about Star Wars, but Brady isn't here to talk about Star Wars. <sighs> Brady, Brady. kill us. What did you say? Would he kill us? Would he kill us if he did? Uh, no, I mean, it's really my it's really my opinion that I want Brady here for a Star Wars conversation. Okay. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about um, Warcraft because he's the only person who saw it, and I keep yeah. hearing that Warcraft is actually good. That's surprising. And that you don't have to oh, like the game. Yeah, we're talking reviews on it really bad. They're actually really mixed because really? some people some people are like I'm a fan of Warcraft and that's it's it's selling out. It's like not true to the heart of World of Warcraft and it's like other people are like oh they totally embodied it perfectly. I loved it huh. and it's all over the place with like I mean I'm also, I, I, try I can see that I guess I can see like people being too diehard about their game and then it becomes a movie and they're like you ruined it just because it's the thing I like and I just feel like I own it and I didn't want it represented in some other way. That's like being mad about the Hitchhiker's Guide movie, because that movie was... I remember that movie. Yeah, it didn't really have much to do with the book, but it was like in this... Like, it was I, really I really movie. liked that movie. Yeah, it was, it was a good movie. It was the same sense of humor, the same spirit. And they went on a different track with it, but it didn't matter. They had Douglas Adams supervising it and everything. It, it went fine. It does. You don't have to follow it. The original. As long as you're like kidding like it. it. It seems to me that the people who are upset about it are not going to be happy with anything in the movie, no matter what it is, because they have a doctrine beliefs of how they should operate with it. And, um, with yeah, well, and also since it's a movie, they assume that it has a big, a big budget backing and like nobody cares about the game. It's like everybody actually cared about the game because they hired people who cared about the game. And sometimes. Mostly in that, in that movie. <laughs> we're talking about Warcraft. 
like in the credits, it has the the um, record of playtime for each uh, cast member. For like how, yeah, yeah, how long they played WoW for, and most of them are like I played WoW for like three years at least. Wow. Yeah, that's that's actually really interesting. Yeah, they would actually have something like that. I think the guy that plays the lead orc has been playing World of Warcraft for seven years. Um, I saw the ETC guys interview him, who are actually here, coincidentally. Not visual rank, but that's neat. Uh, but yeah, there was, what was that movie that like Netflix the other night and you're like, yeah, don't watch it. It's bad. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of movies I say that about. Oh, oh it, was the one, it was the one with um, the zombie daughter. It's like oh, Michael. the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Is it kindergarten cop? Is it what? Kindergarten cop? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's called Maggie. It's called Maggie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I saw it. Unfortunately, it's not very good. Schwarzenegger's a comedy. You know, the, the, comedy the, selling, the selling point in Maggie is that Arnold Schwarzenegger is in it. But he doesn't really do or say very much. It's just very dramatic shots of his face being all like upset or angry or ready to like kill something or something. You know? Does he say? No. No. He it's has like a whole like three lines. <laughs> it's very disappointing. It doesn't seem like it's the type of movie that has a lot of cheese in it. It doesn't have a whole lot of much in it, except very dramatic shots of people's faces. That's basically the whole movie. Isn't there a lot of driving in it too? Yeah. And a little bit. I mean, he lives out in a cornfield, so it's driving through a bunch of cornfields, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, hell no. Are there any other movies? I saw Predestination recently. What is it? I think that was Predestination. I've never heard of that. Okay, um, it's... Um, is it Final Destination? Is the Final Destination prequel? The end of all prequels? Predestination. <laughs> no, shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, sounds Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it's like all right. It's it's time for another sci-fi movie, and if I pretty much tell you anything about the plot, it's gonna spoil it. So can I? The world may never know. All right. I think so. Are you guys okay with this? Oh, yeah. Can we just put a spoiler alert on it? Does anybody else care about spoilers for a movie spoilers. called Predestination? They probably came out years ago. I just, I just found it. I'm getting quizzical sure looks from the audience. I don't, I don't think, think anybody cares. Yeah, I don't care. Spoiler, spoiler. No, it's essentially uh, about like a time cop, or a time cop, um, whose final mission, and this is an old plot, is that he, he goes back and he meets a person that he's supposed to enlist as his replacement. And it's, it just gets, it, 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 there's like, I don't know, five or six different twists throughout the whole movie, but it basically ends up that he, the person that is replacing him, is him. And he, and her daughter, and the person, his replacement daughter, is also him. And, yeah, it's, like, he's, he's his own mother and father. What? It's yeah. a mess. Yeah, it's, okay, it's a whole mess. Okay, the looking at him like, what are you talking it, but about? It, it, is, it, it plays out really well. Basically, he, he grew up, he, he, he started out life as a, as a little girl, orphaned at, a, at like, just dropped down a doorstep at some orphanage. Grows up, um, goes to, like, some... Like some process to become an astronaut, drops out, finds out that after she, she, she meets some like some beau, falls in love with him, gets pregnant. When they have the baby, she finds out that she doesn't have male reproductive organs, and her uterus is like messed up from have from having a child. So they, without her permission, start a sex change and turn her into a man. At which point she becomes the person who she he later <laughs> on goes back in time to recruit. Interesting. Oh, that makes and sense. Also, and he so, was a recruitment. And after the sex change, he goes he is sent back in time to become to impregnate himself to become his own father. It's it's a very complicated plot. I should trust you to watch it. It's it's actually incredibly good. Yeah, no, it sounds really interesting. Uh, but it, you see what I mean? How like you can't really tell, say anything about the plot without spoiling it. It's like future drama. Yeah. 
Do you know back in time to become his own brand? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was that? What, that um, thing that, that uh, what was it called? It was a YouTube channel, I think, that did like comedy skits. What Childish Gambino started out on? Uh, I don't. Uh, who am I talking about? What's his actual name? He's on Community. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Oh, I forget his name. I know who you're talking about. You said Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Yes. It was a, it was what, it was the YouTube channel that Donald Glover got his start out on. And these other guys, like it was a, this bit where it was making fun of 24. And he's like, we gotta save my daughter. And it's like, okay, but wait, did we just save your daughter? He's like, it's my other daughter. And he just keeps going. And basically, at, at, after the fourth daughter is introduced of somebody who they have to save and or kill. The guy is like, wait a minute, what shot are we talking about this? And he's like, it's a sleeper son daughter. <laughs> and then he escalated to the point he's like, he's like, oh, yeah. you're my daughter. He's like, I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm older than you. It's like, there's a time experiment. That's what that reminded me of, because it's just as convoluted because of this. Just put it in front of 24. It's like, oh, yeah, daughters and stuff. <laughs> Good. Is 24 good? Yeah. I don't know. I hear it's one of those things that kind of pandered out as it like, or petered out to the pandering of the movies. I mean, yeah, I guess there's only so many terrorist plots that you could boil within a given time span. Yeah, I feel like it's a show that I would get bored with pretty easily. It's like, yeah, it's like it's are you ready for that same octane drama constantly every uh, season? I mean, like, maybe. There are like two seasons in that show. There's a lot of cell phone talk in his article. I've only seen That's what I've seen in all the commercials, anyway. Yeah. There's like dramatic walking and cell phone talking with comic book panels. Playing <laughs> the characters or something. Um, what else you got? Yeah, we kind of, we actually kind of like nicely like segued into shows by accident. Yeah. Uh, into what? We segued into shows. Which shows? We've actually watched a lot of anime lately. Like, me and Gakra have. Yeah. I don't know about this is your deal. Yeah, I haven't watched any. Um, Tom and I just finished Parasite. That was awesome. Oh yeah, we didn't really talk about it. Well, we talked about Parasite in the last week, but Marissa wasn't there for that. Do you have anything to add to it? Oh, I mean, I don't know. It was amazing. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I probably don't have very much more to add than what you guys already added, but uh, I, I was really impressed. You know, anime is one of those things where, for me, um, you know, I'm not necessarily like a hardcore anime fan, but I feel like I'm one of those people where if I come across one that's really good, I can recognize it as being very, very good in terms of like the storytelling and the animation and whatever. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed the whole thing. I, I thought the premise was really cool. Um, I thought, you know, the characters, even the parasite itself as a character was, was really, was really fun. Yeah. 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 Cause it, it, you know, at the beginning you're like, oh, oh no, he's affected with a parasite. I'm not supposed to like him because it's a parasite. But like, you end up loving him, right? And at the end, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but towards the end, you know, they kind of become attached. So to speak, and you know, um, I don't know. Like, figuratively speaking, because they're attached immediately. Yes, yes, but figuratively speaking, they become very attached to one another, and, and I feel that. You know, I feel that from from the character. Um, and you know, I thought the love interests were really interesting. Um, they weren't like totally full blown in your face all the time, which I really liked. You know, there was an ongoing storyline, but it wasn't the, the main idea. Our main like the the main female love interest. Her character and him and our protagonist, them getting together wasn't like a huge plot point, but it was like a part of their character that they've already known each other for a long time. It's just like, like, like listen, like the drama isn't with them getting together. They're going to get together. Or, or this issue of him having a parasite in his arm is going to be a catalyst to drive him apart or something. So they already had some already like, like, yeah, like, yes, their relationship already kind of pre-exists, so you don't have to worry about it yeah. developing. And For me, the great thing about that, that love interest is that it helps <laughs> propel the story of what it means to be attached to a parasite and what it means to have that responsibility of you know, using a gift for bettering things, even though sometimes that kind of interferes with the relationships. That yeah, and there's, there's also so. his like, what do I do because I'm putting her at risk type thing. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> I, know, I, just, I felt like that that whole 
thing really help you drive the story rather than hinder it. Yeah, like one of the things, I guess, I guess since he's a high school student, I shouldn't like look into this. It's like, just to me, I'm like, oh my god, it's really obvious what the problem is. Like, you have like PTSD. Like, you're, you have like, you just had like major like emotional turmoil. turmoil. Like, that is what your problem is. And he's like, thinking his problem is something else. He's like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm becoming not human anymore. And it's like, no, you just seriously had like the worst thing ever happen to you. Like, like, but I guess he's like 17 or 18. Like, why would he understand his own psychology that depth in depth? Yeah. I really enjoyed um, how they ex explain what it means to be human. Yeah, like um, his, uh, the whole like I don't want to get too much away. His, his, yeah, his, his choice, to, his choice at that. the end, his choice at the end when he has to make on um, his like, but who am I as a person like mm -hmm. to like to make oh, this decision funny. for something else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. what right do I have? Yeah, yeah. sessions of things. Like it was, it was really well written, and yeah. it's serious. He kind of also thought about it to himself. So I have to. You're trying to do that? Yeah, I am put in this position. Like, I can't just actually not make a decision or not do anything. And I am in this position. I gotta do it. Um, what, what's that new anime that we've been watching? What's the name of that? What's, what's the, ca the Iron Castle. Oh, Cabin Area of the Iron Fortress. Cabin Area of the Iron Fortress. <laughs> what? <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Rodrigo. It's about trains. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I knew, I knew that. There. Yeah. I, knew, I knew that might get your attention. Yeah. It's okay. basically, it's basically if The Walking Dead and Attack on Titan were on trains. I mean, it's like it's like every city, yeah. every city in like a feudal steampunk Japan. It's it's real. It's more steampunk than Attack on Titan was. Because okay, really? everything is like a steam engine. They have steam guns. Like, oh, oh, steam. and it's basically like. Feudal Japan is like under attack by zombies and it's a virus. And um, like their hearts, you can only kill well, you can kill them other ways than just heart shells, right? You well you like cut their heads off, but you still need to take the heart out. I don't know why you need to take the heart out. I never saw heads. anything in the recent episode in the, the eight episodes I watched um, them. The newest episode they someone cut off one of the zombies' heads, but they still took out the heart afterwards. So I think there's something they know about that. Yeah, it's like it's like whenever somebody becomes one of these zombies, that which which have a name and I can't remember what the name is. They have like a they grow an iron case around their heart, and the heart is the only way to kill them. So the our protagonist is like trying to develop like a steam piston just pierce their hearts to kill them because they their guns kind of don't have enough power. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It seems like they do, like but. And like, um, I mean, yeah, guns back then weren't really that powerful. So. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? It's like guns back then weren't really that powerful, anyways. Well, yeah, well, there's a yeah. steam. It's like a, it's like an alternate universe, right? Yeah. So there's like a steam-powered gun that can kill zombies. Yeah. 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 Ye
heart? How, how, how you peek inside and put a like you put on your heart and you just like pull the trigger and you're dead. So they just want you to just commit suicide once you're bit. Based, based on what we've seen though, it would seem that cutting off a limb would save your life, would save you from being infected, but no one's done that yet. There's, there's two people. You were telling me about the limb. Yeah. You also gotta have access to the tools to do so. Like, I mean, the limb's yeah, sort of so on the bone it, it, Yeah, we, I mean, a lot of the people we've seen killing themselves are people who have, like, swords, like, who are fighting them. Yeah. And they die like heroic warriors. It's like I'll sacri I'm sacrificing myself so I don't become a zombie. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather do that I guess, with the mindset. Because it's like feudal Japan. So. Oh uh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great to go know that. Uh, what, what's your name, uh, Joe? Um, so, Joe Hoy. Uh, this isn't exactly a great segue. Oh, that's but cool. I just finished Deep Space Nine. Oh, you finished it? Yeah. Finished it last night? Yeah, I finally finished it. Um, Deep is Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Oh. Yeah, so uh, after rewatching uh, Next Generation again, um, <laughs> okay. I, I was feeling very depressed and like, oh my God. Picard, Data, what am I going to do without you, right? <laughs> and so I was like, well, time to watch some Deep Space Nine, and I did for the first time, and uh, it was great. And I was very sad last night when I finished the last episode. How many episodes were there? Oh God. There's like there's like seven seasons. Is it seven seasons? Yeah. Or there's, eight? No, there's seven. There's and seven like, seasons. Like the last nine episodes are parts one through nine. Yeah. Did you start this? A uh, couple of months ago. Oh, okay. I mean, I've been a little inconsistent about that watching. Was like, it was like a nice super mega binge watch you did there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I didn't do this all in one day. <laughs> I don't think there's, I think there's more hours in those seasons yeah. than there is in one day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, every episode is like, what, 45 minutes long? Yeah, so. the, that last episode is an hour and a half long. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. yeah, and by the way, um... I haven't seen that series I, in, like, years. I enjoyed the way that they ended it, but I was a little disappointed as to how long they dragged it out. Can I just say that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that show is, like... Over a decade old now. I think you can throw some spoilers out there. You, okay, and like one of those, I don't know if it was the last episode or the second to last episode, when Wayun is talking to the founder, his eyes are going crazy. Like, because like they, the, he's a he's a Borda, right? And Borda have like purple contact lenses yeah. like, as their makeup. So, but every time he's been on camera, his, he looks like regular. Like he looks like. He was supposed to have purple eyes. And well, he always has a very calm demeanor about him, right? Yeah, and he has this, like, the, the founder is talking to him, and he's looking at her, and his eyes are, like, wall-eyed. Like, it looks like he is, like, overcome. I, I don't know if they did it on purpose or if it's his contact lenses, but it looks like he is, like, overcome with, um, like, religiously godly passion because he is, like, could they worship the Morda and the other Dominion worship, um, uh, the shapeshifters. The shapeshifters. Yeah. Changelings as God. Huh. Yeah. Um, they might have done that on purpose because, I mean, by that point, at the very end, you know, like there's there's a lot going on. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of, you know, who's, what's going to happen, you know. Yeah. And so they're, they might have done that intentionally. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, I liked how, uh, spoiler alert, uh, when, they, when they killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, <laughs> Wayun dies like five yeah, times. Yeah, in that yeah. You, you don't um, understand. He's, he's got clones, okay? So it's when they kill the last clone. Super spoiler. Whatever. Again, the show a, is like the a show is like at least fifteen years old. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen it yet. What have you been doing with your life? <laughs> yeah. Now watching the Star Trek. Well, I mean, I just finished it for the first time, so who am I to say anything? Um, but I, I just really enjoyed that part when the uh, the change lane was like. I wish you wouldn't have done that. <laughs> that was his last clone. And, and, and Garrick just Garrick's looks like, at her. Yeah, Garrick looks at her and he's like, I was really hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Pretty great. That's good stuff. Yeah. The, the Breen are a real interesting species, too. Yeah, like, yeah what's up with them? I had to look them up on Wikipedia to learn more about them. Apparently, yeah, I don't really know very much about they're, them. They're, they're, the Breen, they they're the Breen Confederation, and apparently there's five different races in the Breen Confederation. Really? And their helmets, like, like some of them apparently have beaks, and that's why their helmets look like that. Oh. But some of them don't, but they all wear the same outfit. Hmm. 
and it just happens to match them. And that's why like Kira could wear wear ones because they're like fitted for like all five species. What's underneath those helmets? I don't know. No one knows. It's a mystery. They're, they're super scary. Now that we're talking about it, it kind of reminds me of Enterprise and how uh, they had the those aliens. What were they called? The Zindi? Oh, the Zindi. Zindi. Yeah. The five different species from the, that somehow all develop sentience on the same planet. I wonder if they're. I wonder if they are the three. That could be a thing. No. Because one of them, one of those species is extinct, though, right? The aliens. The aliens. Or wait, was there, was there more than those species? It was five. So there's aquatics, avians, the primates, the reptilians, and the insectoids. <laughs> and like the aquatics are basically whales. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it's kind of hard for them to walk Yeah, they around. couldn't have a unified thing. And also, I think yeah, like I remember reading in the lore that like the the Breen home world is like really cold. I don't, I don't know anything about yeah, that. Yeah, so it wouldn't really match up. And the, the, the Zindi didn't have a home world, right? Like it got destroyed. Uh, I don't remember. I know they all originated on the same home world. <laughs> that, that's just what bugged me about it, is that they all all originated from the same place and all developed sentience and all somehow got to the point where they could become a space-faring race without being like crazy xenophobic and killing each other. Hmm. Yeah, which seems really difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, what, we didn't even develop uh, gunpowder before we had already killed the Neanderthals. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yay for humanity. <laughs> Yay. Happy I, mean, I, I heard that. I, I mean, I, it, it depends on who you ask, because some just blame interbreeding. Yeah, I mean, I, that's a part of it, too. Yeah. But, you know, so like, like, in, like in Sexoids and Enterprise, we're very, a very aggressive race. Mm -hmm. So, the fact that they would even cooperate with any, with any of the other people who races on the planet long enough. I don't hear what you're saying. And I'm yawning in front of the crowd. That's nice. Anyway. We <laughs> <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> the other show... What were you saying? Rodrigo? I did. I did. I said nothing. The other show that I watched recently, I believe we have seen it too, is Dimension W. Oh, you Oh, you watched it? I watched it all, yeah. Yes. Uh, here's, it. Okay, here's what I immediately noticed when they explain it. Rodrigo's going to know what I'm talking about here, is that they so, were so. like... They're like, they're, they're explaining dimensions and like, X and Y, but we've discovered another dimension, the dimension W, and I was like, what? And then it's like, uh, the dimension where we can draw power from, and I was like, sitting there alone, I'm like, you mean zero point energy? And they keep talking about it, I'm like, you mean zero point energy? You mean that thing that already exists, the concept? And like, basically, it's, they're ripping off Stargate, and that there are these coils that would draw, like, draw energy from subspace. AKA Dimension W, and um, like this, the, there's a our, the protagonist is like hunts down illegal coils because the illegal coils. It's also a really interesting like Big Brother type scenario is because each coil and anything that like every power source, everything's ran off a coil. Your cell phone, your the lights in this building would be run off a coil. Everything. So illegal coils are on the network. So if someone's doing something illegal with a legal coil, it's registered in the coil terminal. And then like the police will be notified. But if you're losing legal coils, you can do all kinds of bad shit with it. And be like, uh, you know, do whatever you want with it. Like the one guy had a legal coil and a squirt gun and it could pierce like a wall. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, and she shot water through a wall That's so pretty so cool. overpowered. <laughs> and yeah, and there's like, I don't know, there's it gets deeper in the story, and like the our, our protagonist who, in the intro to the show, has this dance number that is hilarious because like, it doesn't match his character. And it's all. like this this intro is so edgy. <laughs> and then like yeah, he's like super serious throughout the entire series. Yeah, but, but that intro just makes him so like this is it, not you. Well, he's dancing. He, dances, he still has a super serious look on his face when he's dancing. And oh he's yeah, still, like yeah. has like these crazy moves and stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like. Basically, you don't know there's a mystery in the show, and there kind of turns out to be a mystery. There is one weird episode, of the one where there's like ghosts. Yes. I was talking about to the person that um, introduced me to that show, 
And I, I was talking about those like last week. And I was like, yep. But the only episodes that I like lost when I was even watching, I was like, what am I even doing? Yeah, I literally was like, what's going? What's going on? What's happening? Like it was, it was so random, and it felt like a filler that just just tossed. Well, in when there. it comes into play, later. yeah, it comes into play. It, it comes into play. play. That's talking right. about it. I'm still like, yeah. what are you guys talking about? Like that's when I like, I came again. I came back into consciousness of watching it. Because I was just playing and I was just like zoning out. out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I basically blacked out while watching it. <laughs> and it's when our robot protagonist is yeah, like, there's a robot protagonist by the way is getting like attacked and threatened. She's like, oh, you're gonna feel the pain I'm feeling from the ghost lady from and her from her um, barbed wire arm. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, wait, what? She's, she's, what? It's a robot. They don't feel pain. What's going on? What am I doing? <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I'm just going to try to pay attention now, because it, 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 I lost it. But after that gets done, it's smooth sailing again. Yeah, it's, it's regular storytelling yeah. from that very now. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It, it's really short. It's like only like, what, like 23 episodes long? 20, 23, 24. Like I hope they, I hope there's more to it because I feel like there's more to be ended there. The way they ended it, they uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. There, there's even like some of the background characters like get a lot more like attention. Like they they, they do stuff and I'm just like, oh, I'm here. Yeah. Um, I really liked um, God Loser. Loser, yeah. Yeah, his his thing was cool. It's his, his story. Here's what I don't understand: is his son. A robot? Or oh, that is really his son? I think his son's a robot. Never again. I, I can't tell. I, cause I, I think it is because the bird thing. Maybe. So the bird only, thing. You only see his son once. No, you don't. His son's constantly with him. He dresses up like a girl and stuff. His son is with him in the. You're talking about Loser, right? Yeah. Loser has his son in the beginning when he's like remote control. So his son dressed up as a girl for the rest of the series. Yes. Oh, okay. Did you think that was just a different character? Yeah, I just thought his son just like disappeared and then just had like a daughter with him. I was like, who is this random girl? I just ignored it though, because I was like, yeah, I, just, I ignored there's, it. There's a part where he talks about his wig. Okay, I probably, I probably missed it. Yeah, but I don't know if he, like, was a robot, though, because he kind of doesn't seem like... I, I don't know, there's no way to really uh, tell one way or another. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I like it. I feel like there was another anime I wanted to touch on, but I can't really remember what, what, what it's there. One Punch Man! We <laughs> talked about that. Everyone knows that. <laughs> I know. Are you I just wanted to Mar see it. Marvigo is about to say Legend of Overthing. I know he is. Legend of Overthing? <laughs> no. Well, let's not talk about that one. Um, you, you don't want... We already, we already know that you already know what Legend of Overthing is. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Let's not talk about it. We're not going to talk about, talk about, about, talk about it. Legend of Overthing. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hentai. Oh my god. Oh my god. Marissa. Oh, 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 oh no. Look, I don't judge your lifestyle, so. Get your Bocano Pico out of here. <laughs> Get what out of here? Bocano Pico? It's also one. Um, it's, a, it's an inside joke. It's I only fun. know what these are because of you two. I <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I know it because it's like the most, it's, it's the original. It was the first, the one where the one is called. Is that the one where, where they, like, they, 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 there's no, just, there, there's no reason to go, hey, yeah, you know, watch this. How about, how about, how about this? We'll do a podcast. Because we, I was thinking, um, <laughs> earlier, <laughs> earlier, uh, this is completely off topic. Earlier in Ivy Opera and I were talking, mentioned our good friend Rocco Cyrus off the Henny. Uh, are there any good stories that you've heard recently about me? No, I there's new heard. stories about Rocco Cyrus. That's what I'm asking. I mean, because like, seen that. Every, yeah, every time I drive by, uh, and I drive by the Griffey Lake Dam, I see that I love you, mom, and Griffey. You know the peace off thing? Yeah. Wait, wait, what's it say? It says I love you, mom. He like. Oh yeah. yeah. I was there with him. I was I was with him when he did that. Like, and they, the spike tag under the bridge, the spike spiegel. Yeah. Every time I see those, I think I think a little Bronco. <laughs> I know where he is. 
Uh, the only thing that I knew, ruckus. the only thing I knew about Broncos that was on the Haney doing um, recently was he got a motorcycle. He, 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 was, he was riding, his, he had to sit on his motorcycle in his own apartment. Uh, we talked about that on the last podcast. I'm pretty sure. Or, or no, no, we talked about it on FTL. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you guys go and catch That's us here. Uh, so, uh, have you guys played any video games recently? That didn't you know, work. That didn't work well, for you. I was gonna bring up some E3 stuff. There's yeah. lots of trailers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff coming out. Oh, uh, uh, Pokemon looks so good. Legend of Zelda. And Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda. Yeah. That's his chair. Right? Yeah. Um, I was telling the author this on the way up here about it. Like, there's somebody took a screenshot of the opening thing of Legend of Zelda, the new Legend of Zelda, and they what? they edited all of these like. Um, different fonts of words from other show titles because it reminds them of all that. I remember I saw Legend of Korra in there and it's like the legend of blah blah blah. And like, I'm like, does anybody else really think that it's like seems too reminiscent of a bunch of other IPs? Because that's the joke. That's the joke. I don't know if it's, if it's true or not. Does it seem like it's like cashing in on recognition from other IPs, not the Zelda franchise? I guess not much enough of it to tell you. Yeah, yeah. I haven't even seen much of the trailer for it. I just saw like little bits and pieces. Yeah, I've just seen clips of it. I haven't watched the full trailer. I saw also just saw the video that Donkey made about it. It looks really pretty though. That. There's that Kuba diving game. Um, the, yeah, the Kuba diving game that Sony made. It's like Journey but underwater. I don't know anything about it. Oh. Just, it is pretty. I actually missed Sony's uh, PlayStation, but I know they won. Won the war. They, 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 what, E3, there's a contest? Yeah. Uh, E3 is always a contest. Oh. It's, it's, well, it's, a, it's a figurative contest. Yeah, it's, it's not a real contest. Who, 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 who like, built up the list? Who made the best show? Yeah, who had the best stir? Who got like a bunch of pu- yeah. like the most publicity? It's, who was going to like be affected by their marketing strategies at E3 the best? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so far, I don't know. A lot of, apparently, a lot of companies are pulling out of E3. Um, it was Sony, right? That pulled out. Sony, was it Sony that pulled out, or was it? Um, no, no, Sony didn't pull out. They. Who pulled out? Who's like across the street? Yeah, because I heard about. What were you watching? You were watching it the other day. Yeah. I was watching it on Twitch. What? What, what, what were like, the games? Because you you were watching particular games on their mm-hmm. stream. I mean, I, I was watching, um, I don't think I was watching E3 that day. Was it wasn't E3, it was the one that, one of the, one of the companies that left. Yeah, um, oh goodness. Why can't I remember? I watched so many trailers that day. I'm going to put the um, was a part of it. Uh, Bethesda? No, no, no. that's what was on Dice. Dice. Yeah. Dice. No, because Dice had the Battlefield 1 thing going there. Yeah, no, yeah, that was what she was talking about. Yeah. Of E3, they oh. did something else. Yeah, they, no, they, 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 they were there at E3 doing the yeah. live stream. Yeah, they were up there. Yeah. Who are we looking at? Neeps Gaming was doing the, the live stream. I don't there. know. I don't even know. Somebody, okay, what basically one of the big companies about? pulled out and has had their own, like, pseudo E3 across the street. That's really mm-hmm. weird. Yeah, well, um, the Ouya did that too. I was about to mention that. Yeah, but, like, the Ouya is dead. I didn't even. I've never even. I've never even seen the Ouya. I saw it for like two seconds. For two seconds. <laughs> I've never even seen a picture of an Ouya. Yeah, I saw the, the whole thing, and then I just. It just died. <laughs> just. <laughs> it's like having a Zune or something. <laughs> <laughs> the joke is, the opera has had a Zune for. Really <laughs> you know what game I can't wait for? What? what? The new South Park game, the fractured butthole. <laughs> Yeah, it looks very good. Hey, yeah. it looks hilarious. Looks I'm like all about it. Oh my god. Yeah. And the name itself. The last one was good. So, yeah. there you go. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. It looks it's so funny. It looks like a really hilarious yeah, episode. I, I What's your that problem with it? It's like, no. What? I just can't. Uh, he's just, he's Biafra's just a party pooper. Biafra's fussy anyway. He doesn't he doesn't like fun things no. or laughing. He had fun once. I hate <laughs> laughing. It's a face. I hated it. <laughs> he hates fun and all things good in life. Foot is, foot is bad. <laughs> um, 
What about that new Kojima game? Oh yeah, Death Stranded. Um, I don't really know what it is. Nobody knows anything know about it. Is. Nobody knows anything about it. The only it, the only thing you know about it is um, naked invisible babies, naked Norman Reedus, um, Kojima, <laughs> Kojima uh, dead narwhals, and things floating in the sky. That's Wait, it. Were there dead narwhals? Yeah. When it, there it, were. Okay. I just. Like it's when it does that the pan back in the trailer and you see the five floating things in the sky. Yeah. There's dead narwhals like all over the beach. Oh, there's, I didn't even notice there's a bunch that. of dead to sea life and the most noticeable one is there's narwhals. Interesting. Huh. Oh. Just need to watch the trailer again for the for yeah, I guess we'll figure out this game is in the next two years. Yeah, I would really love to know. Mm. Opinions on No Man's Sky? That got pushed back and now they're getting death threats over it? Yeah. Got pushed Whoa, back death threats on No Man's Sky. Oh, yeah. Oh, please elaborate. <laughs> I, that, that's all That's all you need to know. Oh, okay. They pushed it back to like August or something, and people were like, no, we're going to kill you. What? Yep. Yeah. We're going to kill you. <laughs> you going to die. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 people are actually sending death threats to this yeah. because they, uh, this is, push it well it's not like they're going to complete the game anyway. It's going to take, by the time, okay, people get No Man's Sky. It's going to take, by the time they are adults, and their kids are adults, and then they have grandkids, and those kids become adults, just to fully complete this entire game, because there's over one trillion planets <laughs> in this game. Yeah. Now, like, they're actually... The, but they want it now, the opera. The creators of the game actually feel bad that their game is never going to be fully completed. We couldn't possibly wait a month and a half. No, we must die this, now. <laughs> These people have been watching too much Kid Nun. It's my money and I want it now! <laughs> what do you, you well, only, By the way, we saw Ken Nun driving around Bloomington the other day. You're only going to understand that if you live in southern Indiana, you're going to know who Kid Nun is. <laughs> Die. <laughs> you will receive death threats. Yeah. Uh, I love Ken Nunn. I love watching him, watching him drive around in his Wait, summer Rolls Royce. Wait, you love Ken Nunn? Yeah, he drives around in that convertible Rolls Royce and does a little princess thing. <laughs> I've never seen him do the princess thing. Well, you gotta yell his name. If he's in the convertible Rolls, because oh, he's he got does two Rolls Royces. Wait, he does he's the princess wave if you yeah. yell his name? That's he, well, he has... Yeah, because he's got the two cars. He's got a winter, he's got a Rolls Royce Phantom for the winter, and then a soft top Phantom for the summer. Yeah, we saw him driving that one. And, and if you yell Ken Nunn at him, he'll like, do a little princess wave. <laughs> one time, the first time we ever saw Ken Nunn, we had DJ in the car, and we were both doing the same thing. There's this car in front of us, and we were staring at its license plate, and it just said Nunn. And I, like, we were both like, thinking to ourselves, like, one of those, like, like one of those nuns, <laughs> and then like PJ, PJ on his own figures out what it is. He's like, Kid Nun, and he's like hanging out the window, screaming at him. His other motto: It's just that easy. It's just that easy. <laughs> like completely like looking like an insane person. And Kid Nun looks at him and is just like, Oh hi. <laughs> like, like as if yelling at somebody. It's just that easy. It's something normal that you do. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, what, what I was going to ask about No Man's Sky is your opinions of it. In it doesn't look like a game I'm going to play. I'm, I'm really? actually wow. excited for it. I'm because excited for it. It's cool. Just honestly, play. anyone that's doing a let's play or anything, any, any planet and creature you find, you get to name it first. first so, yes, it's going to be the race to name, all, to, to name all the things, basically. And you get first names. Alright, see here's what, I'm, I'm more in Tom's boat, like, I'm not too excited for I like, I love the idea of it, but the fact is, like, everything's procedurally generated, and yeah. every other procedural game that involves procedural generation that I've ever seen, kind of becomes a lot of the same. I, so, like, I think what they said, they figured out how to make it constantly different. But is it different enough? That's what I'm wondering. Well, I go... Well, we'll we find out. There's only yes. one, one trillion planets. Because it's... Alright, and it's, um, you, you, like, you land on a planet, you explore, you collect the resources, you name the doodads, you go back up, you do some trading, yeah. and then you repeat the process. Well, like, um, like, they, they keep it fresh enough. Yeah, like, um, so that you don't uh, we, I, we, we are actually going to have to cut it off right there. It's... Oh, we, we, have, we have 20 seconds left. 20 seconds. We have 20 seconds. 
Um, Tom's not excited, Beatrice excited, I'm kind of like, <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah, yeah. No Man's Sky, play it or don't, we don't care. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we are Linear Radio, uh, we are at booth uh, 243, which has no number on it, so it'll be hard to find. Basically, we're by uh, Elsbeth, and that's all I can really tell you. We're, we're, we're across from Green Banner. We're across from the autograph yeah. booth, so if you want to come over and... We're look, playing uh, Donkey Kong Country yeah. 3, we're trying to beat it by the end of the weekend, so, so please come by, stop, stop by, help us. Yeah, if you want to be on, if you, if you want to be on Let's Play, come over to our booth. We'll gladly have you on. We're having problems. No face cam. We're having problems. <laughs> <laughs> We're always having problems with that. Because Merce is bad. Because the opera is bad. All right. Well, it has been fun. We will see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>